All right. All right. So this is my first tutorial ever on FL Studio. I've done some tutorials in the past on Tractor Scratch Pro, but this is my first FL Studio tutorial. So please bear with me. <laughs> so today I'm going to be discussing saturation and why I believe it's a better option than compression when mixing your track. So the whole point in mixing is you're trying to get the most out of each instrument to where it doesn't clog up your sound, if that's a good way of putting it, to where you get a louder volume at the end and it sounds fuller and rich, but doesn't sound overly mid-rangey or muddy or heavy, too heavy in the bass. Because like some other people say, your car stereos, for instance, have the boost basted on purpose. The manufacturers do this. So you end up getting a, a huge buildup that you don't want of low end information and low mid range information as well. So first of all, I made this simple little melody with a serum and it's just a saw lead more or less. And I'm going to play it for you. So right now, for the sake of time, this is the before. And this is the after. Now the point is you might be going, well, I don't really hear any difference here. If you notice, this one isn't jumping up and down as much, but it, it sounds the same. So this leaves you a lot more room in your mix for other instruments so that you can get a louder sound at the end. Now I will show you how I went about this. So first of all, you want to start out with a lower volume, um, or lower gain, excuse me. So right, this knob right here is where you want to start. You don't want to start with your fader like I have my whole life, because by default, everything that starts at like 77%, you want to bring it down to like about 45% or so, 48%. And we're going to go ahead and, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I got this set. So let's start. Let's reset these. All right, so the first thing you want to do is turn your ceiling all the way up. Turn your saturation all the way down, which means you're actually turning it all the way up. Okay. Now you're going to want to find the sweet spot with your gain to where you start to see a difference in the transition or peaks, if you don't know what transients mean. You can go pretty crazy with this if you want. Okay, I'm a little crazy to show you that it doesn't squash the transients like limiting does. It, um, you can still see the shape of the transients have stayed the same, more or less. That's why soft flipping is so cool. But yeah, what you have now decrease the dynamic range in a good way so to make room for other instruments. Okay, so this is on the limiting part, limiter part, not the compressor part. Alright, so now to make this friendly with other instruments, when you're mixing, you always want to high pass and low pass filter anything like a synthesizer. So, unless it's your bit this instrument, you're going to want to high pass this to make room for the low end for your bass and your kick drum. So, high pass. A lot of people say just to go around 100 hertz to shave off the extra low end. But what I found is when I tried to follow that rule, I ended up with problems because I still ended up with a very muddy mix. So, in my opinion, please don't chastise me for saying this. As it goes, it sounds good with the other instruments, you can get away with going as high as you want, as long as it's playing at the same time as the bass and the kick. All right, so I would say right now, um, 240 is a pretty problematic frequency, so it's okay to go above that or right about that. High. Okay, so the other thing is, if you see there's, if you notice there's some information here, way above 10k and all that. 
well, since this synthesizer isn't a hi-hat or shaker, etc., you're going to want to low pass that. It lets the lows pass. I would say around 10,000 hertz. This isn't as critical as the low high passing, but you'll notice that you'll hear there will be a less harsh sounding mix when you do this. Okay, so there we go for the EQing. Now let's have a little bit of fun with effects. I already did this earlier. So you just your basic reverb. I learned this recently. It is pretty fun to, instead of just doing your dry wet, um, changing that, you can go way down with your time. I went all the way down to like 24. I guess it's like 24. So I had found the sweet spot earlier. Okay, and the next thing is this really cool trick with the delay. It may not be perfect for this particular sound, but it, there's plenty of times where this makes sense. Just, or you can just use a little, just use a little bit for a subtle effect, kind of a metallic sound. And the way you achieve that is notice the delay time is way, way fast. So it's, you find the sweet spot. Like that. <laughs> and you turn up the feedback. That's the trick, it's a little bit more feedback. Who did Delay 3 comes with FL Studio 20, I believe? <coughs> For free with the FL Studio 20. Producer Edition. Okay. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> so there you go. And by the way, back to the reverb. This is my favorite reverb. You know why? It's so versatile. I like being able to high pass with it. And when it comes to fall with low pass, so it's, you just absolutely see what's going on. And that's, you know, two different settings. I won't go through this right now, but you get the point. So anyway, I hope this tutorial was very helpful, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye now.